Greetings and welcome to the SP Biz Conference. I am super excited to be here today kicking off the Office 365 track in a session called Create a GTD Dashboard in Office 365 to get things done. Uh, before we get started quickly about me, my name is Wendy Neal. I am a senior SharePoint consultant with McGladry and I'm located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, I have started with SharePoint about eight years ago and my specialties within the SharePoint world, I guess, would be out of the box customizations, using SharePoint Designer workflows. Um, I also do some custom development and a little bit of branding. And I'm also very passionate about usability within SharePoint. And so you may have seen on my website listed there, I do write a lot about usability in SharePoint. I'm also a contributing author for a few other sites in the community. So I really like this quote. In today's world, it seems like we're busier than ever. Nearly everyone feels like they have way too much to do and not enough time to get it all done. And I know I personally have a lot of stuff going on in my life. You know, I have a full-time job. I contribute to the SharePoint community by speaking at conferences such as these and SharePoint Saturdays, writing articles for my blog and other websites. And then I also like to have time for my family and personal life as well. And so it kind of felt like I wasn't able to put as much time into each one of these areas as I wanted to without negatively impacting all the other areas. And so I knew I had to figure out something if I didn't want to give up any of these things. So I decided to implement a set of principles called Getting Things Done, or GTD for short, which I'll discuss in much more detail throughout the presentation. I've tried to use several software apps that were designed to handle GTD in the past, but each of them I felt came up a little bit short in functionality. So I just decided to build my own dashboard in Office 365. And so I'm gonna share with you how I built that. So before we look at the dashboard though, let's look at the agenda for today. First, we'll cover the basic principles of GTD and how to incorporate those principles into your life. Then we'll take a look at the components that were used to build the dashboard, such as the list libraries, views, workflow, and even some JavaScript. Next, I'll demo the dashboard using some real world use cases to demonstrate how the dashboard can increase your productivity. And then finally, we'll throw in some tips for achieving that elusive inbox zero so you can get control of your email inboxes. And so then we should have plenty of time for questions at the end. So let's jump right into the basic principles of GTD. Getting Things Done, or GTD, is a methodology or a set of principles created by Dave and Allen, which he describes in his book of the same name. And so I was trying to come up with a couple sentences or bullet points to sum up GTD in one slide. And what I ended up doing was taking the, this directly from the first paragraph of the welcome section of his book. And so he says, it teaches you how to have more energy be more relaxed, have more clarity and presence in the moment no matter what you're doing, and get a lot more accomplished with much less effort. Well, that sounds awesome, right? If you follow the principles outlined in the book, I really think you can achieve these things. In the next few slides, I'm gonna to attempt to explain just the really basic high-level concepts of GTD, but I'll really only be scratching the surface, so I highly recommend if you wanna learn more to read his book. Not only is it a waste of time and energy to keep thinking about something that you're making no progress on, but it also adds to your anxiety about what you should be doing, but you're not. So before I started practicing the principles of GTD, it seemed like I was always spending a lot of time thinking about what I should be doing that I'm not doing, or thinking about how I should go about accomplishing something, or defining the details in my head over and over again about a project or a task that I need to complete sometime in the future. Now this is very counterproductive, and it really accomplishes nothing. A good GTD system will help you capture, define, and organize all your ideas, projects, and tasks into a single location. And so once you've gotten all this information out of your head, then your mind becomes clear and you can become more focused in actually performing the tasks in your to-do lists and getting things done instead of just constantly thinking about it. So before I start to explain the basic concepts of GTD, I first want to point out the wrong way to manage your tasks. So have you ever tried creating a daily to-do list on your calendar where say you're forecasting out a few days or even weeks with what you'd like to get accomplished each day? Well, I used to do this and it did not work for me. 
and I couldn't even figure out why I wasn't getting everything done that I wanted to, and I blamed it on not having enough time in the day to get everything done. But David Allen sums it up perfectly in his book. He says, first of all, it's hard to nail down your to-do items ahead of time because you have new things creeping in and priorities are constantly changing. And secondly, if something doesn't absolutely have to get done that day, but you've got it on your list, it's going to dilute the emphasis on those things that truly must get done that day. So you should treat your calendar or your daily to-do list as sacred and only put those actions that must get done that day in order for the methodology to work as intended. So I want to define a couple of key terms before we go any further. Alan defines an open loop as anything considered unfinished, and if not managed correctly, it will consistently engage your mind inefficiently. So what does that mean? In other words, anything that does not belong where it is, the way it is, is an open loop that will just be pulling on your attention and quite possibly driving you crazy. So the key to getting things done is putting all of your open loops into some kind of organizational system that will allow you to properly manage and process them. According to Allen's definition of a project, it's any desired result that can be accomplished within a year that requires more than one action step. So it's not necessarily the typical project you might think of at work, like maybe where you have a software development project that you're working on where you have tons of tasks and a project plan, a Gantt chart, although that is still a project according to this definition, but also think of it on a much smaller scale. So even something that takes only two actions to complete is considered a project. So for a simple example, let's say you and a group of friends want to go see a movie. Go to a movie would be a project, but you would have several actions that you need to take on, such as researching what is currently playing, and then you need to decide to discuss which movie you want to see, and then buy tickets online, and then you'll actually go to see the movie. The next action is the next physical activity that progresses your project toward completion. So the first step in our movie example would be to research what's currently playing because we can't buy our tickets yet or even have a discussion of which movie to see until we know it's playing. So research what is playing would be the next action. Once we complete that action, we check it off and decide what's the new next action. So by filtering your action list by next actions, you'll see not only the things that you can take action on now to move your projects forward, but you aren't distracted by all the other actions that must occur later. Think of a context as a way to sort or categorize your actions by the tool, location, or situation in which you can accomplish the work. So some examples of this would be phone call, email, computer, work, home, errand, and so forth. By organizing your next actions list in this way, it'll be easy to filter out all the emails, for example, that you need to send and do those all at once, or all the phone calls you need to make. Or for the actions that you can only do at home, you don't want to see those when you're at work because you can't make any progress on those right now, so you can filter those out. And we'll see some examples of this during the demo. So there's five basic steps to the GTD system. Capture is just basically collecting and gathering placeholders for all the things you consider complete, all the open loops in your world. You're doing nothing else with them at this point, just getting them all into one big bucket. The next step is to clarify. You'll look at each item in your capture list. And you'll answer questions like, what is this? Is it actionable? What's the next action? Then you'll organize. You want to place each one in the proper bucket so that action can be taken or just file it away for reference, or maybe you just want to be reminded of it in the future. In the reflect step, you want to regularly review your system, gather and process all your stuff, update your list, get current, and then engage. So the first four steps, you're actually just capturing, clarifying, organizing your stuff, but you also have to do the actions in your action list. And the engage step just helps you to also make good choices about what to work on right now at any point in time time and then you will actually do the work. So this workflow diagram illustrates the capture, clarify, and organize steps. The green area at the top, the in basket, this is where all your stuff is going to accumulate. And just keep in mind, you'll likely have more than one in basket. You could have a physical in tray for paper-based items. You could have a virtual inbox in a GTD app. And even your email inbox is also an in basket. So the next step is to clarify each item in your in-basket, and this is signified by the pink areas in the middle of the workflow. So you'll ask questions like, what is it? Is it actionable? What's the next action? And then will this take less than two minutes, and should this be delegated to somebody else? 
And then finally, and the, the blue areas, this is the organized step. So this is where you'll actually put your stuff somewhere to be dealt with later. If it's not actionable right now, you might put it in the trash. Um, you might put it on a someday maybe list or a tickler file to, to remind you later, um, or just file it away for reference. And then if it is something that has a next action, you can decide at this point, is this part of a project? Then you'll kind of think about what are all the steps that I need to do to to finish this project so you can make a project plan. And then you'll ask, is it something I can get done in less than two minutes? If yes, just do it right now, get it done with and don't worry about it later. If not, then you can delegate it to somebody and then you would put it on a waiting list. So you, you, you delegate it out and now you're waiting for them to do it. So you wanna keep track of that so you can check in with them to make sure they've gotten it done. Or you can schedule it, put it on your calendar to do at a specific date or time or if there's no solid due date, you just put it in your next actions list to do at the next opportunity that you have. So the next step is to reflect. And a good way to do this is to incorporate a weekly review into your schedule. This is a meeting where you're gonna sit down and process all the stuff that's accumulated in your in-basket since last week. You can update and organize all your lists, get clean, clear, current, mark off all the things you've gotten done if you forgot to, it's really important not to blow this meeting off. Schedule it on your calendar for every week and then treat it as sacred. As far as which day and time, simply do what makes the most sense for you. So I find that Friday at noon for about an hour is the best time for me. The week is nearly over so I can reflect back on what I've accomplished, but I can also look forward to next week. And by doing it in the middle of the day, if I uncover anything that I missed that still needs to get done before the weekend, I can still do it on Friday afternoon. So again, this works for me, but just find what works for you and, the, and just stick with that, and that's the key. So the main purpose of this entire process then is to facilitate good choices about what you're doing at any point in time. And so if you've captured and organized all your stuff properly, then you don't need to worry or spend time thinking about all the things you're not doing at the moment. So after your must-do items for the day are done, you should then be armed with the tools you need to choose what's the next best thing for me to work on right now. Look at the screenshot on the right and imagine that this list was very long and in fact, there are dozens of items in my next actions list. Now imagine that I have about 15 minutes free before my next meeting and I wonder what I can get done in that time frame. So here I have filtered my list by context time needed and energy to reveal there's only three items that I could possibly work on right now, where I'm at, within the time frame that I have available, and with energy. I picked low energy because I don't have a lot of time and I just want to whip something out where I don't have to use a lot of brain power. And so now it's just a judgment call, since these are all three the same priority, of which one or two of these items I can get done before my next meeting. So hopefully this will all become much clearer when, this, when we see the demo in a little bit because I'm going to show you all the action lists that we've talked about so far and how to filter them so you'll only see what's most relevant to you at any point in time. And the last thing I want to talk about before we move on to the solution is ways of identifying your daily work. So we've already mentioned the calendar. These are the things you must get done that day. But then you're at liberty to choose what to work on from your next action list. And so these are both called your predefined work. But what about the things that just show up throughout the day that suddenly become more urgent and must be done right away? Well, this is the reality of the world we live in, and so you have to do those things. But that's precisely why you shouldn't put too much on your calendar or your daily to-do list, because the things that you'd like to get done that day, but it's not imperative that they get done that day, are going to get bumped, and that's gonna cause you a lot of stress because you feel like you're not getting things done. When in fact you are, it just may not be what you had envisioned. And then the third way is to constantly define your work. Clearing out your in-tray and digital messages, breaking your projects down into actionable steps. You can do this as time permits, and you don't need to wait for the weekly review to do all of your processing, when in fact, some of your actions may be more urgent and can't wait for that weekly review. So now that we've got some basic high-level GTD concepts out of the way, let's take a look at the different components that make up the system. The GTD dashboard app that I built is a SharePoint subsite created using the team site template. 
I deleted a few of the lists and libraries that weren't needed, but then I added a few more. So this slide just shows all the list libraries and apps that make up Solution, and we'll take a deeper look at each one of these in the next few slides. You notice that there's one listed that isn't highlighted there, the tasks list in the lower right hand corner, and that's just a list that was created automatically when I created a workflow. And even though my workflow doesn't use a task list, it just must remain there, but there's no items in it. Let's take a little bit deeper look at each one of these. The actions list is just based off of a task list, and this is where you're gonna collect all your different types of actions, your collect items, your someday tickler, your waiting for items, and these can be related to a project. Your projects list is a custom list, and again, a project is just an any multi-step outcome that can be completed within one year. Project categories is a custom list, and it's just used as a lookup list to categorize the project documents. Events is a calendar list. And again, events can be related to a project. Area of focus is a custom list. And this is a lookup list used in the projects and actions list. And it's just basically the different areas of your life, like personal work, church, volunteer, that kind of thing. And a context we've talked about, these are things like home, errand, email, phone, online. And it's a custom list as well. It's a lookup list for your actions list. The libraries used by the site, you've got a project data library, which is basically documents and links related to a project. And it utilizes the link to a document content type to store links within the document library. And I could have made those two separate lists, but I just chose to, to make them one list. The site assets library is where all of your images, CSS files, JavaScript that are used throughout the site are stored. And the site pages library is just a wiki library containing the wiki pages that use throughout the site. So apps and other stuff. The email services is a third party app. It's free for now. It's in public beta and they're working on their pricing model. Basically it enables emailing directly into a SharePoint list. So you could forward emails to it, or if you think of something on the run, you could send an email to an email address and it would automatically store that in your actions list. Like I said, it's free for now. When the pricing model comes out, depending on how much it is, I might have to, to rethink um, a different way of doing it if it's too much. And again, this is optional. This is not really part of the dashboard. It's just kind of an additional service that you can use to enhance it. And it's the only part of it that's not built with out of the box components. It's also using Hillbilly tabs, which is a jQuery script written by Mark Rackley that turns several web parts stacked on top of each other into a tabbed view. So we'll, we'll see an example of this when we get to the demo. It also uses JS link throughout the site. So this is something that's available in many SharePoint 2013 web parts where it allows you to alter the formatting, data, and functionality of a web part using client-side script or, or JavaScript, basically. The views, the actions list by far has the most views, I think a total of 17. It's got views for sorting the data in different ways by each of your actions lists or by what's due today or tomorrow or the next seven days, etc. Projects project data and events, they just have a couple of views each there. And all of the rest of the lists and libraries just have the one standard view, whether it be all items or all documents. There is one workflow at the moment that the site uses. And so I have a field called repeat in my actions list. You can see that over in the screenshot at the right there. This allows you to create re repeating tasks and so you can see that you have a choice of the repeat frequency. So the repeat action workflow is a SharePoint designer workflow. It fires anytime an action is modified and it checks to see if it's been completed and whether or not a repeat selection was made. And if both of those are true, then it just creates a duplicate task with all the fields duplicated, except for the due date is set to a calculated date value based on the criteria that was chosen in that repeat field. And we'll take a peek at that actual workflow in SharePoint Designer, and also we'll show it in action during the demo. All right, so here's a quick peek at the actual dashboard homepage, and it's what brings access to all my lists and views together in one central place. So if you notice the, the yellow highlighted area there in the left nav, the top part of that, that's just all of my action list my, and my project and my calendar are kind of all right there at my fingertips. 
And then the bottom half of that menu is more of kind of an admin area where I can go and I could add new areas of focus or context, project data, that kind of thing. It's more of the admin um, side of things. I've got some buttons at the top here, some kind of quick where I can create a new collect item, a new project, a new event, and so on. It gives me quick access to create new things. Then right in the middle here is where we've got our uh, main dashboard of things that are due today, tomorrow, next seven days, later, and then even overdue items. These are the things that I, I want to focus on when I first come into the page. And then I've also got over on the right pane here um, a collect my collect list so that I can see, and I'm just showing the first five, but I can scroll through those. It's just kind of give to give me a visual reminder, hey, I've got unprocessed things out here that, that I need to possibly look at. And so I can just see those at a glance without having to do anything else. All right, so let's just jump right into a, a demo of the solution. So here again is my dashboard, and you um, just saw a screenshot of this a moment ago. So again, on the left here, we've got our navigation areas of all the, the things that we can do. Um, we've got the quick buttons at the top to create new items. I've got in the center here, I've got my, my jQuery um, hillbilly tabs where I can see quickly um, this is what's due today. And actually, I'm also in the today view. I'm also showing things that are overdue. Now, these are things that I, I've actually done. I just haven't checked them off yet so that you could see, so I could demo that these are overdue. I can see what's due tomorrow, what I've got in my plate for the next seven days. Later, um, I do have a few things that are scheduled out for later. And then again, just if I just want to see my overdue items. And then over on the right, I've got my collect list that I can kind of scroll through and see all that I have, a few items that have not been processed into the system yet. These are kind of sitting in my in basket at the moment. All right, so I want to start off by going into site contents and just to show you again um, the components of the system. I want to go into the area of focus list here first. So the, again, these are the things that define the different areas of your life. And so we've got things like, I've got like personal work, SharePoint community, because I do stuff in the SharePoint community, tech blog, I have a natural health blog, freelance and, and volunteer stuff. So these are all the areas of focus. Of course, you know, you can add new items, edit these, whatever. All right, so let's look at the context list real quick. Um, you can see, again, context is a tool, location, or situation in which you'll accomplish a task. And you'll notice I've got two columns here, the, the actual context and then color. So you'll notice that on the dashboard, um, I have my contexts color-coded. It's just kind of a nice way to give, give another visual, um, a quick way to, to see the different contexts. And so these will take, you'll notice, they'll take a hex code. I am also going to um, edit this and show you, not only can you enter a hex code here, I'm gonna copy this so I can replace it back, but you can also type in the common name of, of the, the more popular colors here. So if I type in just a strict red, it should still work as well. So you notice I changed the online context to red. So if I go back to my dashboard, you'll notice that it's changed color. So I am gonna go back and undo what I just did because I like the color that I had chosen better. Okay, and we're done. Yep, we're back to good. Okay, so the next area I wanna go into is my actions list. So I can get there various ways. I can go back to site contents or I can click up here in my actions. This is gonna be my all actions view. And it's going to list, it just lists everything, things that have been completed. It's all willy nilly. There's no organization or anything to it. And you can see I've got a lot of stuff. Well, I've got over a hundred items there. So I wanna go into, not sure where my ribbon went. Let me go, not available in all my views for whatever reason. Um, let's go into the list settings and just take a, a look at that real quick. So we've got, so again, this was based on a task list, but I've also added a bunch of other fields. Um, some of them you've seen, the area of focus, context, action type. So this is just all of the different, different fields that we have available. Uh, let's take a look at 
our calendar. So this is actually made up of multiple things. So the events, I mean, we, it's an actual calendar uh, based on an events calendar list, but I've also got a couple calendar overlays here. So I've got actually got my actions list of things that are due that have due dates will show up on this calendar. And then I also have one of my contexts was writing. And so I, I wanted to highlight those a different color. So these are things that I know I can take a look at a glance and see when I've got some either blog posts or our upcoming articles do. And so if you want to take a look at that real quick, if we go up to events here, no, I'm sorry, it's under calendar. We go to calendar overlays. So here's where I've configured both of my calendar overlays. We'll take a look at these in a minute, but I wanted to show you something really quick. If you want to add a new calendar overlay, Something I think would be really powerful, the the, la the other two calendars I added were, are SharePoint calendars, but if you've got email through Office 365, so if you have Outlook online, you can do an exchange calendar and then you just have to configure it um, with your actually either your web Outlook web access or your exchange web service URL and you can actually pull in your Outlook calendar directly into this calendar. So I think that could be really, really powerful. Now, I don't have Outlook online on my tenant, so I can't do that, but I just think that would be super cool. So let's go back. And so again, we have the couple of different um, calendar overlays here. And basically we're just pointing to our actions list in a particular view. And if I go back to, so that's the calendar view. If I look at my writing calendar overlay here, again, I'm looking at the actions list, but I'm looking at the writing calendar view. So let's just go look at those real quick. Let's go look at our different views. So our calendar, and the reason why you're not seeing some of these items duplicated is because I'm filtering out the writing into a separate, um, separate view. So... If I go to modify this view, you can see that I've got my dates set that I want. But when I'm filtering, I'm saying for my normal view, I'm saying context is not equal to writing. And then for my other view, um, if we go to, we said that other one was the writing calendar view. If we look at this one, so you can see I, I'm just showing my, my writing items here. But if I go to modify this view, this one, it's it's still pointing to the same actions list, but it's just showing where context is equal, equal to writing. And so that's how I've separated those two out so that I can get the visual, the different colors with, with just my normal actions and then my writing. Let's look, let's go back to site contents. What else do we want to look at here quick? Project data. These are all of our, our documents and links. So you can see we've got documents and links within the same. As I said before, I, I had used a couple different GTD apps and so I don't have all my data migrated over to this one yet. So I've kind of been in the process of doing that, but you can see I've got some test stuff in here where I've also been just playing around. Um, let's look at the projects. So this is my projects list and I've got a bunch more projects than this. I've just got a bunch of them filtered out so you guys can't see them. A lot of my work projects so I can keep my clients' information confidential and some of my more personal projects that I might not necessarily want to share with everybody. You're going to have, if you create something like this, you're just going to have a lot of projects. So just keep that in mind. I'm just showing a few here. Basically, um, let's just look at the, the list here real quick. You know, the different fields we have. We've got a lookup list where we're pulling an area of focus, description, project manager. I mean, it's just usually just going to be myself, but maybe, you know, with a family or maybe you want to assign different things to different, you know, your kids or your spouse or whatever, you could, you could change that field. Of course, you have a project status, some notes and whether it's been defined or not. So what I do want to show you is a couple of projects. So let's just click on the SP Biz Conference. I've customized this form. So you see the project information at the top like you normally would, but I've also added another one of these tabbed views at the bottom where I can see all the actions that are associated with my project 
any documents or links, which I don't have any associated with this one, but you can see all those here. These are grouped by the status, so these are not started. And these are all of my completed ones. And you'll see here, I've got a whole bunch here for work on slides for the presentation. What I had done, remember the repeating task functionality that I've implemented? This was, once it got closer to conference time, um, it was imperative that I spend a little bit of time each day kind of working on my, and perfecting my slides. And so I made a daily repeating task. So it would always show up every day to remind me, hey, I need to work on this. And when I checked it off, it would create a new task. So that's why I have a bunch of repeating here. Let's go back to the projects list. I want to give you an example of a task that I had been procrastinating on. I just couldn't seem to get it done. It was on my list forever. I needed to mail some things to my daughter, Jess, who's down in Miami at college. And nothing like super urgent that she needed right away, but just there was a few things that I wanted to send to her. And I had a single task on my list called mail package to Jess. You can see here that what I ended up doing was turning it into a project because there were multiple things that I needed to do in order to get this done. For example, I needed to first gather all the items that I want to mail and like write in the action itself. I had listed the actual things that I needed to, to do. But the, the problem I was facing was every time I thought about it, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't remember what all I said I was going to send her. And oh, I don't even know where those are, if I could find them. And then I have to get her new address because she moved to a different apartment recently and I don't have her new address yet. And so there was all these things like, oh, it's all this stuff I have to do. Well, I don't have time to deal with any of that right now. So what I did was I created, separated these out into tasks. So gather items to mail would be one. And I set that as the next action. So I can't pack the items and address the envelope until I've done that. So I can't do either of these other two things. So this is an example of setting the next action. And, and I've already done this, by the way, but I just put this example back out here so I could illustrate it. So if I look at my next action, so one day I was at home, I had like just a few minutes left where I could do get something done before we had to leave and go somewhere. I could filter this by, could filter my context by home, and I could say, well, this is good because I've only got a couple of things here. If I had a bunch of other things in here that would take longer, I could filter by the time needed or the energy, and I could really reduce this down, and I saw, oh, gather items to mail. Well, I could probably do, it says it'll only take 10 minutes to do that. Yeah, I can get these things. So I went and grabbed them all, gathered them, and then put them in a spot where I could do something with them later. And so like I felt like I had made progress, like, yes, I've got this done. And then I went in and set my next action to, you know, pack these up and address the end address the package. And so I, by doing that, I, I made progress and I felt good about myself and I got something done and I don't have to stress about it because I've got it all defined. I know exactly what I need to do. It's just when I find the few minutes to do it, I'll do it and I'll get it done. And so I had been procrastinating on that for, you know, a couple, two or three weeks when once I put it in this system in this format, I just, I got it done right away. And so kind of hard to explain, but it just, it really, it's, it's a different shifting of mindset and kind of empowering you to choose what you want to do and to get, to get things done. So I thought that I wanted to share that example with you. All right. I kind of, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but I want to show you some of the other um, actions list views. Again, these are all the collect items that I haven't really processed yet. These are all of the actions that I have categorized as action and you can see again the color coding this was done with with JS link by the way and also some other thing I've done with JS link is changed the priority field to be either exclamation point if it's high priority or a down arrow if it's low and then if it's just normal priority I'm not showing anything and then also with JS link I'm hiding the actual column header so you can see the priority column is still here and I can even sort or filter by by the column, it's just you don't see the header name, and that was just so I could suppress it so it wasn't so wide. So we did that with JS Link, which I'll show you in a little bit. Let's look at the tickler list. These are things, again, that you want to be reminded of later, but they don't necessarily have a due date. So these are things that I wanted to be reminded of. Um, anything that's in the past is going to show in red. Anything I wanted to be specifically reminded about today shows in green and then upcoming. Um, waiting for. I don't have anything in here yet, um, but if I had delegated something to somebody, I would set a follow-up date, and then that's going to show up here. I can look at this and follow up. 
and then someday items. These are just things that don't have a date that I just, I might want to do someday, maybe not, but I just want to put them here so I don't forget about them. All right, let's go back to our dashboard. Actually, let's go take a look at, I wanted to show you real quick, the uh, site assets library. So this is where we're using, and I'm going to sort these by type, by document type. So this is our uh, CSS file. Then we've got some JavaScript files that we're using for our JS link, uh, the priority icons, the logo, and then some text files that we're using with content editor web parts. And I'll just show you, I'm not going to have time to show you every single one of these things, but let's look at the dashboard tabs code. So those are the dashboards on the, the home page. This is actually copied straight from Mark Rackley's Hillbilly tabs solution. It's just um, copied here. So what you do is you copy this into a file. You name it as a text file, though. And then what you do is on your um, home page or wherever you want to put this script. Let's go into edit mode here. We will go into the edit the web part properties of this tabs jQuery web part. And it's just a content editor web part. And then here I have a link relative URL to that text file in my site assets library. That's all you do. That is it. That's what makes the magic happen here. Okay, and then I want to show you an example. Let's save that of where I've got some JS link in action here. Uh, I'm going to go to the next actions page. It'll be easier to show you. Okay, so let's go to edit mode here. And again, this is using JS link to color code the context and also to, um, oh, this one's not doing the priority because I want to be able to filter by those. I want to have them near each other so I can filter out my next actions. But we'll look at the context JS link file that it's using. And, all right, so we'll expand the miscellaneous section. And then down here under the JS link is where we're going to. I'm going to copy this. And we'll open up uh, Notepad++. Paste this in here so you can see it all. Um, zoom in a bit. So we've got a reference to our color code context.js file that's located in our site assets library. And then also another reference to this um, hierarchy task list. So, and you'll want to separate multiple jQuery references by the pound sign. So basically on this page, there is already some JS link standard out of the box so that when you check off an item, it's going to mark that as complete and put a line through the item that it's been completed. And so when you put your own JS link in here, that gets overwritten. So we had to go out and find, I did some searching online and found that you have to explicitly put that in there if you want to, to use that functionality if you add your own JS link. And so basically what happens, so, and just to demonstrate, let's stop editing, just to demonstrate, um, getting an item done. Let's just say, I'll have to go, uh, oh, so this is our, I've already done these, so I will check that. So basically what checking that does is just kind of puts a line through it and then it refreshes the page and, and that uh, fell off the page. And so in order to keep that functionality, if you add your own JS link, you have to explicitly state that. Okay, two more things that I wanted to show you quick. If we go back to site contents, this is the email services app that I was telling you about. And if we click through here to configure it, so basically what this app does is it allows you to configure a SharePoint list or library. You can send an email and it will upload it to that list or library. And so basically when you install this app, you have to go in and configure it. And um, you select, I've already done this, but you select the, the list that you want to send it to, and you can map the different fields. So the subject from the email field will be mapped to the name column. The body of the email will be mapped to the description. And so you once you save that, then it generates this email address here. And so I can use that to email things to my list. So if we go back to the SharePoint, 
So you can see some of these things here where I have a forward in here. These are things that I forwarded to my list. So if I open this up, you'll see that. So this was an email I got to moderate this this blog uh, comment on my blog post. And you'll see that it's going to show the entire um, message in the description field so that I can reference that. And the last thing I wanted to show you was the the repeat action workflow. Well, first of all, before I show you the workflow, let me show you um, how that works. So every day I have a recurring task daily to add social media posts to my buffer. So it, it's a program that schedules out my posts throughout the day. So I'm not like um, sending out a bunch of updates at once. So I've already done that for today. So I'm going to check that. So that dropped it off my list uh, because it's uh, no longer due today. And what it does behind the scenes, so let's just, let's take a, a look at the uh, workflow quick here. Um, so I've got a repeat action workflow, we'll open this up. And you can see that it runs on the actions list. Um, and it starts automatically when an item is changed. So let's just go and edit the actual workflow here. Take a look at it. So basically it's a fairly, uh, straightforward. We're checking to see whether the status has been completed. Um, if, and I've got a field called repeat action created that gets checked after an action has been created. So it's just an additional check to make sure that, that we should create this and making sure that the repeat field is not empty or it does not equal none. So basically it has a value in there. Then it's going to go on. Um, it's setting these variables. We don't. I don't have time to get really um, too detailed into this, but basically for each choice, so you have every day, if repeat item equals every week, basically you're adding different, um, you know, if it's every day, you're adding one day to the date and then outputting it into a variable. If it's every week, you're adding seven days, two weeks, 14 days. Um, if we go down to... Uh, you know, if it's every two months, you're adding two months to the day and so forth. And so then at the bottom here, then we, then we basically go in and we create an item, which is basically duplicating everything here. So if we look at just this one, we're going to create an item. It's going to have the name of whatever the, the uh, value of the current name is and, and so forth for all these fields. And so basically that's what, what this does. And so if we go back to our page by now, and I might have to, let's refresh this here. By now, it should have had a chance to create that. If I look at tomorrow, I do have a task that's identical in every way to the task that I just completed, except for the due date it added one day. Okay, so I, I know I went through the, the demo, um, and we went through a lot of stuff fairly quickly. I'm sure you're gonna have questions, so I really welcome those at the end, but first I wanna, uh, just go get back and finish up these last few slides and then we'll, we'll open it up for questions. All right, so you saw the demo and the good news is that you can download the site template. I saved it as a template. You can go to my website to download it. It includes everything that you saw here except for that email services app. Uh, you can't save a site as a template if it's got third-party apps installed on it. So I had to uninstall that first and then save the template, but you can just go out and procure that yourself. It also doesn't have the custom theme and logo. It's going to have just the standard blue and, and black and white um, color, but then you can go in and, and change your colors if you wish. All right, so before we move on to the email tips, I wanted to close with this thought. You can make your GTD system as simple or as complex as you want. You can create tasks and subtasks for every little detail of your project, or you can just create more general high-level tasks if that's going to work better for you. But the bottom line is just don't make it so complicated that it causes a tremendous amount of work just to capture and process a simple task. You know, your system should make you more productive and not less. All right, so now I just want to share a few tips with you for achieving inbox zero as since we're talking about productivity and all that. So the really bad thing about email is that your inbox can tend to grow extremely large and very quickly if you don't keep on top of it. So here's just a few tips that I've found over the years that kind of work for me to keep at inbox zero. So emails should be treated just like any other stuff or open loops that you have in your life. So use the getting things done principles that I've, that I've explained here today 
to process your incoming emails just like you would with any other action or project. All right, and keeping that in mind, don't forget the two minute rule. If you can answer an email in two minutes or less, just do it now. Don't leave anything unread in your inbox. And I'm still guilty of this, but I'm working on it. I'll take a peek at the email and then I'll mark it unread to handle it later. Don't do this. If you can't answer the email in two minutes or you just don't have the information in front of you right now that you need in order to answer it now, forward it on to your GTD system and then archive it to refer to later, but don't leave it in your inbox. Also make sure that your GTD system is set up to accommodate processing of emails from any device. So as you saw in the demo, I set up my actions list to receive email messages directly into the list as a collect item. But just make sure to add your list's email address as a contact in all your devices so that you can easily forward an email to it to be processed later. So when you're first trying to get your inbox under control, it can really seem overwhelming, and especially if you have thousands of items in your inbox. So one trick to get up to speed quickly is to move all the items in your inbox, the things that you don't just need to reply to right, right away in the short term, or just stuff that's been sitting there for a while, you're just not sure what to do with it. Move those into another folder that you can process later. Just getting them out of your inbox and starting with a fresh, clean inbox can do wonders and can also keep you motivated to keep your inbox clean going forward. Just don't forget about those old messages. You know, create a task or a project in your GTD system to clean those up and make sure you go back and do that when you have a chance. If you receive things regularly that don't require action from you other than just to archive or to place in a folder for later viewing, utilize your email system's inbox rules to automate those things for you. So for example, every week I get a backup file of my WordPress blog site emailed to me. Well, I don't need to reply to that email. I don't need to take any other action except I just need to file it away in case I have issues and I need to access my backup to restore it. So I just set up a rule in my inbox to route that to my backup folder and it never even hits my inbox. Constantly checking your email as messages come in can really crush your productivity. So unless your job requires you to monitor your email inbox constantly, like say a help desk support person, for example, um, you should not be reading every email as it comes in. You should designate two or three times out of your day as email processing time and then stick to that schedule. You can let people know about your schedule if you need to, just so they don't think you're ignoring them uh, if you don't reply right away. And you may even have to turn your email off during the rest of the day so you can concentrate on getting things done. So I hope you learned how to apply the GTE principles to your life to increase your productivity and to help you get things done. And also how you can leverage Office 365 or even SharePoint on premises to help you organize all the stuff that's going on in your life. Thank you so much for watching. I know there's a lot of great sessions in this time slot, and I really appreciate you choosing this one. And don't forget to fill out the session feedback. Thanks again.